closer look at the trends that we're watching. Luke Lloyd is with us, Senior Wealth Advisor, Strategic Wealth Partners. Thank you, Luke, for being with us. Um, I know you have some stock picks for us and such, but uh, just the big picture. And of course, AI was the word of 2023. Will it be so for 2024? It will be, but it's going to be in a very, very different way than a lot of people think, right? So 23 was where the year where AI kind of became a, a term that we all use and that we all love and where the technology kind of reared its head around the corner, right? And that's why a lot of these stocks like NVIDIA, AMD, the suppliers of the technology did very well. Um, this year for 2024, it's actually going to be those companies that implement the technology and artificial intelligence that we think are going to do very well. So I'd be paying attention to and t taking a look underneath the hood of where areas within the stock market, areas in the economy, even the global economy, macro trends to where technology, this, this great technology that are going to make things so much more efficient and add dollars to the bottom line, where it's going to get implemented for these companies. And I would take a look at investing there. Right, because some say AI, but they're not really uh, doing anything with it. I mean, even Apple, for example, it doesn't have the AI picture that some of the other Magnificent Seven names really do. Um, that being said, you're watching for certain companies that you think could be wins. I would love to hear more about these names. Accenture is the first one. What is it about Accenture that you like? So this is exactly what I was kind of referring to with you know, there's companies that are going to benefit from implementing the technology. Um, Accenture's the biggest um, uh, consulting firm in the world and one of the best. And it's one of the first places that companies go to when they want to implement new solutions or they want to bounce an idea off of, uh, you know, a, a new idea that it's going to benefit their company. So Accenture's going to go in to help implement these technological AI solutions for big corporations, but also the small mom and pop shops as well. So, you know, a consulting firm is always needed when you need to implement something big and go through a huge technological change within your firm. Accenture's going to benefit from that. And stocks kind of sold off the past couple of days. I think it's sitting at a pretty good spot. We own it. Right. Okay. And RTX, formerly known as the Raytheon. Um, RTX, why do you like this one? Yes. So actually, as stocks have been selling off the past couple of days, Raytheon's done pretty well. Um, this is a stock that, as I think geopolitical events continue to heat up, whether it's the Middle East, whether it's Russia, Ukraine, or potentially a China-Taiwan event, you know, I th you know, one of the areas the government never pulls back spending from is defense. And both Democrats and Republicans can agree with that, right? So uh, defense spending will remain high. I think Raytheon was just actually awarded a $350 or $400 million contract just a couple of days ago as well, which is one of the reasons why it's done very well the past couple of days. You know, I think defense spending is going to remain high. Geopolitical events continue to heat up. Raytheon's a stock that a lot of investors want to go, not only from a defensive standpoint within the uh, geopolitical realm, but also from a defense standpoint if, you know, some uh, over the next couple, you know, year, uh, economic data does deteriorate some. Right, understood. And then Salesforce. Salesforce. So this actually combines kind of both of what I was just referring to. So, you know, it's really good from a defensive standpoint as well, because, you know, one of the ways that companies make money is to drive efficiently and add dollars to the bottom line by cutting employment costs or cutting overhead some other way. And Salesforce helps make companies become more efficient with their employees and their sales employees um, by, you know, keeping track of who prospects are, who clients are. Um, so it's a great defensive stock, but also it's great for actually implementing artificial intelligence. So their Einstein platform is something that nobody talks about. So they're actually a leader within artificial intelligence um, that's kind of under the radar and not spoken about. So I think it kind of gets a both uh, bounce this year from a defense stamp, defensive standpoint, but also from a technological standpoint because that's not being factored into its revenues and how many small mom and pop shops and large corporations are going to implement their technology into this year as these companies become more efficient and the stock's done very very well over the past year we think it continues to do well above 300 bucks this year yeah what's your big picture i mean we have a, a lower rate environment for 2024 this is an election year um, we had obviously 2022 was rough and then 23 took off in a way people didn't necessarily expect what do you see for 2024 can we do it again type of thing <laughs> so Listen, I, I think that this year, especially with the earnings estimates sitting at roughly at 12%, it's not going to come from the revenue side of things. Everyone thinks that we're kind of out of the woods and soft landings around the corner. 
um, and the consumer is going to remain extremely strong. Well, we know the consumer, from a macro standpoint, is spending on credit card debt. The middle class America is not feeling very good with 60% plus of Americans feeling like we're actually in a recession when we're not in a recession. So I don't think that the stock market is going to do well because of the revenue side of things. I think it's going to do well because of the efficiency side of things I was talking about with technological um, implementation. So uh, what I think is going to happen this year is actually the same thing we kind of saw this past year where the stock market does fairly well, maybe not 25% gains in the S&P, maybe closer to 5 to 10% gains at the, by the end of the, this year. But deteriorating economic data to where middle class America still feels pretty weak and they're still hurting. I think you're going to continue to see that that disconnect this year to where middle class America, Main Street hurts and Wall Street does fairly well. This is the disconnect that's been happening the past couple of years where the money's flowing to the wealthy, those that own assets, and those that are, don't own assets are spending on credit card debt and racking up that debt for a long time. So we think that continues this year. The big question we all have to answer is when does that kind of bubble or when does that kind of you know, a spending mentality, that debt mentality come crashing down. Was it the end of this year? Is it next year, five years down the road? That's something we have to pay very, very close attention to because this debt spending, this debt economy can't last forever. Yeah, and that's always a surprise when people have 20% credit card rates and they're comfortable putting more on the credit card. Um, you know, at some doom point, spending. you can't it's even, make the, minimum, you know, you can't even make well. the minimum payment. You can't even make a minimum payment if you keep building the the main balance. And that's right, it's doom spending. I mean, this is the point we're at is people were stressed out and when people were stressed out uh, back in the day when you had no money, you just stopped spending money and stayed in and cooked dinner at home and spent time with the family. Now, when people are stressed out, um, they go out more, they spend more money uh, because they have access to credit. This is a different economy than we were used to four, five, six, seven, eight decades ago yeah. and you have to factor that into our economic outlook, right? Right. It's good to see you, Luke. Thank you so much. Love when Thanks, you're on the Nicole. show. Luke Always Lloyd, Strategic Wealth Partners. Thanks.